projects are necessary, regardless of the magnitude of these projects, if money enables them to be built, and then, if, then there's a question to arise because it wasn't a lack of concrete, steel, or anything over labor. It was just a lack of money. Money again does not build these bridges. So the dependency on these funding shows the well-being, let's say communal well-being, well-being of uh, society depends on this, is a critique of the very well money, the wealth we are looking for. It's a critique of it. If, if everything depends on the money to be made, then really, like in this society, like in the state right now, people are put out of business, uh, out of work, out of business as well. Everything, nothing materially has stopped to exist. They just are not worth being produced. It's not for the use value, it's just for the exchange value. If it can be obtained, they don't produce it, regardless of the needs. And this is not new in the crisis. It's just, just more obvious because now everyone is out of work. And uh, obviously, uh, businesses uh, are being hurt. But this depends on them. It would be redundant, so I hope <coughs> But money is, uh, is just that facilitates the distribution of goods and services. So you got to have something like that, or how you keep your ledger straight. So, you, know, you can't get rid of that. You know, it's a big tried barter system or something that might work on a small level. <coughs> Um, yeah, and you gave us, uh, you know, three good points, three lessons that uh, you know, give us some understanding of the crisis. Uh, I agree. Uh, you know, what, uh, you know, from, let's say, the capitalist point of view, I mean, what would you say Bernanke be telling uh, the bankers right now that they, uh, uh, yeah, in terms of uh, you, know, you screwed up or you need to change or is there any uh, I mean maybe maybe they're telling them nothing because uh, uh, yeah they just sort of go on and on and, and they're not going to change yeah no I mean in some ways you know this you know, the credit crunch you said you could kill the uh, capitalist uh, economy uh, and uh, how how are the banks uh, you know addressing that right now? Other than you know, they well they're getting seven hundred billion uh, from the country. Uh, <laughs> billion. Uh, billion, yeah, right, billion. <coughs> yeah, a few years, a few years. Well, ap apart from what they say and think, one could say how are they addressing the issue? What are they doing with the money? Yeah. They're doing their business. Well, yeah, what are they doing with the money or uh, you know, are they you know, saying, hey, you've got to reform the industry somehow, or...? Uh, no, and I would ask, why should they? <laughs> well, because they ran into a credit card. Right. Well, I pointed out before, whether Bernanke or how he's outraged at them, I'm not exactly sure. But there has been a lot of outrage, obviously, at the whole financial industry. Yeah. And the outrage is to say, you guys screwed, us up for, screwed it up for us all. You guys are so important for us. If you don't provide loans, we're all screwed. And instead of providing the useful loans that we need, you went off in your own casino, made speculative creations you didn't, yourself, you didn't even understand yourself, <coughs> And now we have an economic crisis. What underlies that outrage, that attitude? What underlies it is the idea that banks have a very important responsibility, that they're crucial for us, that they're actually a means for my livelihood. If we don't have banks, then obviously we can't produce useful goods, I can't have a job, my family starves, I starve. And that's why they at the same time say, that's why the banks need to get back to business. Their outrage of the banks is based, on a, is based on the fact that they accord the banks a very good role, actually. They have a very high opinion of what banks do, provide loans. What I want to say is, instead of being outraged at bankers, 
It's important to understand what banks do. Banks provide loans for the purpose of enrichment. The fact that the economy can use those loans is a reason to criticize the economy. It proves that the purpose of the economy is not to produce useful goods, not to create livelihoods for people, but to turn money into more money. So instead of outrage at the banks and while hoping that they get back to business, Actually, I would, da I would abandon my hopes for recovery and start to criticize both the banks and the economy that they serve. Do you, do you see what I'm, 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 yeah. So I'm wondering, once we start doing that, when we start distinguishing between good uh -huh. things and bad things, I mean, what are we looking towards? It's mm -hmm. socialism, right? I mean, so how do we get there? The educational places, the staff administration, and what is um, this group ruthless criticism? How do they speak to you? Well, they let ruthless criticism talk for themselves, but I mean, you're asking me what, you know, where does it go from here? What do we do from here? Um, I like to take small steps. <laughs> and the most important step, regardless of what comes afterward, is, well, not to be immodest, but to do what we're doing here tonight. The attitude of most people towards the crisis, it could have taught them something. The crisis could have really taught them how well, how much the capitalist economy deserves to be overthrown. To be replaced with a, means of production, or a mode of production that produces for people's needs. Obviously they didn't learn that lesson. The mood of the public, the stance of the public, I've said a few times tonight, they recognize in the crisis that they're very dependent upon the health of the banks, that they're very dependent upon profit making. And for that very reason, they hope that the same business gets going again. It would be a huge step, and that's not something I would underestimate, to get to people to change that attitude and say, if it's the case that the entire material, to say it with a bit of pathos, the entire material life process of society comes to a halt as soon as that purpose is no longer, to achieve, is no longer achieved, turning money into more money, then that's a reason to criticize that system and not hope for its recovery. As far as that goes, then I would say, spread that word. If you understood the message, spread the word. And then we'll see what comes then. I really wouldn't, yeah, like I said, wouldn't underestimate that attitude change. How much would be won with that? How much would be gained from that? And that's all we really have the capacity to do at the moment. <laughs> Well, first of all, it would kind of depend on what the unions want. Um, if I look at the unions right now, they're certainly not doing anything that I could support in any way. <laughs> in fact, the opposite. Certainly. And, you know, even where they say, I, I would believe them, they regard themselves as representatives of the workers and to do something for the workers. What they say is we really need to create jobs and to do everything so that people get jobs. That's the recipe for the crisis. And quite logically, what that consists of in is making compromises across the board. Right. Right. The right. Well, that's definitely a difference, and the way the unions are acting sounds a lot like the management. Right. And what I would say is, as far as material interests of workers go, they're certainly not uh, representing them. What they are representing are the material interests of the workers in this economy, and that's exactly the problem with unions. They say your interest in this economy is to have a job. That's the precondition for everything. Therefore, everything needs to be done to create jobs. And again, quite logically, that means improving conditions for employers to make money. And that's a, I would say that's a reason not to support, um, well, a movement that seeks to create jobs like that. Can I uh, maybe it helps it's one thing that you have to live selling your body to a capitalist. Right? 
can break it up a year later, you can pay for wage later. It's another thing taking this as an opportunity and not as a threat. See, so, uh, I would I would say, well, you have to work and as, as long as you can pass this economy right now. Let's negotiate for the highest possible salary and so on and so on. Because competition hurts the single worker, it would all go cheaper because the negotiation skills they have do not exist and they do not to begin with. They have to survive in a, in, in a system where the access to goods is only through money, provided only for labor. Okay, this is it. This is the scenery, the, the, the situation. It's a total different uh, attitude and, and an agitation of the union towards their members if you say, uh, let's fight for jobs. And what I make with that's a threat because jobs are the jobs of the capital. You know, you don't own a job, you have to work, and it's the job the capitalists offer and create for one purpose only. And this is the only way it exists to enable them again to make a profit. The profit itself is always his, his uh, foundation to even increase the burden of the work itself, buying new machinery, making them work longer and so on, and even increasing the, the parts of competition among labor. So jobs, there's nothing promising. Unfortunately, you have to do it right now. And it's a prerequisite right now to survive, but that's it. It's another, that would be an interesting uh, agitation. The union would, uh, would turn around and say, okay, right now we do this, but as soon as possible, if we're not, let's get rid of wage labor. Uh, wage labor. 